Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC. I know it's been a little while since I've actually created just a regular content video, um, but let's uh, let's talk about clamping down. I'm about to carve a whole mess of my HDPE material. I'm gonna use an O-flute bit. This is all for my spindle kit enclosures. Um, I wanted to talk about clamping, how I'm gonna hold this stuff down um, so that I can actually carve it. And then on um, this Sunday, I'm actually going to be doing the production run. So this is kind of my first test. So uh, come back with me and we'll talk about how I'm going to set this up. Mm. Right, what I have here is my Shipoko Pro. Um, it's got the hybrid bed with the T-Tracks. The plan is it's 27 inches wide. Uh, we're not relevant to the depth. Um, it's actually going to overhang there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, two panels on this side, two panels over here, so four panels total. Then I'm going to flip the entire board over and repeat the same thing. So these two panels are going to cut the inside of the uh, enclosure, uh, of those panels on the enclosure. These two are going to cut the outside so that when I flip it over, all of a sudden the one the outsides that I cut first are now going to be upside down and allow me to cut the insides and vice versa. The, what I have here is I've got, I'm going to be using my ultra fences um, to help me with repeatability, um, especially since I'm going to be cutting a whole bunch of these. I'm going to be cutting on this board four times using the exact same program. So cut, flip uh, horizontally, cut again, flip vertically, cut again, flip horizontally, cut again. Keeping this front area secure is the most important part. Um, that's going to be the hardest, uh, hardest part, and that's what my clamps are going to do. So I've got my corner fence here, my ultra fence. It allows me to adjust it um, in a different way. So I'm going to adjust it all the way far back. I'm going to line it up with the front facing of my um, T-Tracks on the side here, and I'm going to clamp it down using the the T-Track nuts. I'm going to use my smaller six inch straight one so that it'll give me something good that I could just pull. I could just pull this whole stock to the left and forward and it will perfectly line up right there on the thing. That way whenever I zero my X and Y it will always repeat no matter how many times I replace this board it'll always come back to this point right here. Every piece of stock that I put in I just put my stock in, clamp it down, and hit go. I don't have to re-zero anything. I'm going to have a couple of my, these are the 3 8 inch toe clamps um, with some T-Track nuts. So I've got my clamps, I'm just going to put it, bump it right up against my fence here, tighten that down. I'm going to bump it again up against the corner fence here, tighten that down. That will take care of my left edge of my board. In the front, I'm actually going to have three uh, because I'm doing so many, so much cutting, um, and I want to make sure this is as accurate as possible. I don't want this board shifting at all. I'm going to have two over here, three across the front, and then two of my lever clamps on the right side. Tighten that down. I'm doing it by hand. I don't want to use a drill because the drill will literally just um, rip these uh, rip these lever clamps or yeah these lever clamps apart pretty pretty bad. It'll suck it down to the board and then it'll reduces the lifespan basically. But it doesn't need to be pulled down all the way. It just needs to be put some tension on it, pull that down on that side. And now this stock is not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to uh, load up the program and then we're going to uh, get this thing running with my, uh, this is a 1.5 kilowatt spindle. Uh, this is the air cooled. Um, I've got the VFD all mounted up over here. And yeah, let's uh, let's zoom back and I'll give you a little little more display of what's going on here. So I have got the V2 um, dust boot on here with the Z independent bracketing. I've got the camera mount. I've got a GoPro, which allows me to film exactly what's going on there. You can see kind of, well, if it even zoom in, I'm not sure if I can focus on that particular thing. But it, it gets a zoom of the bit, a view of the bit that we can actually see and play with. Um, I have got the uh, hose wrapped up over the edge there and just comes right down here to my extractor. Back here on the back, it's hard to tell, but let me bring the machine forward here. 
Here on the back side, you can see the V2 goes into one of my extension adapters, my 90 degree extension adapters. That way it points the hose straight up and right into my Feztool um, Cleantech adapter here. And then of course the little button that allows me to turn the uh, extractor on and off. And again, it comes up um, into the cradle of my uh, ultimate hose clamp. Um, grabs onto it. I've got a little Velcro strap just to give that extra bit of security just because it's kind of tugging on this wire or on the, on the hose that goes up over the edge there. It's not a good connection up there really. Um, but I've got that hooked up. I have got the uh, my spindle. Um, it is in activation mode. I'm ready to hit start on this program. Um, I've got the power cord plugged in. Um, it is plugged in. It's hard to tell, but it comes way over here. It's kind of ugly right now. It's a good thing I've got dust collection. That way I don't have to worry about the dust. But this is a 20 amp uh, power strip that goes over to a dedicated power, power connection. Since the power on the VFD is EMI filtered, that provides a really nice connection that I can actually plug my CNC machine into the same plug that my, um, that my VFD is plugged into. So I can run one power through that one 20 amp dedicated um, uh, circuit. The cut has finally finished the first round. Um, we've got the two inside panels and the two outside panels. I'm about to flip it over but before I do, it is important to know that, you know, we are dealing with um, plastic, which does come off in pretty fine little granules here. Um, no dust boot can actually handle this, mainly because it is a, uh, it's got some static cling to it. Um, there's electricity built up when, especially with this, the brushes moving across the surface, the high speed of the motor and all that stuff. Um, it's good to have your, your, your vacuum hose handy so you can pull it out. Uh, do some really immediate local cleanup, um, and then we'll uh, flip this over and run the test again. Or, not the test, run this cut again, and then in the end, we'll have two complete um, enclosure panels, which we'll combine with 3D prints and some acrylic, and yeah. Um, instead of cutting the outside of the panels, I ended up cutting inside because I was joining it with the interior sub panels, which I do want inside. So yeah, four panels, half the, half the board is damaged now, so can't use it. So I flipped the entire board uh, front to back, um, which gives me another uh, four panels that I can start carving. I've updated my, um, my file, and yeah, we're gonna start pick our, start from the beginning. That's where we're gonna start. <laughs> Second time around, uh, worked perfectly, like a charm. So we've got the uh, perfect edges on our, uh, Plates, we've got the plates cut out with the original holes and the insides cut out. Um, we've got the sub panels over here on the right, which is the outside, along with some holes for some in M4 bolts to go into so that it's a nice flush whenever it's all put together. Flip this over and just rerun the same command. Real quick, I've got my hose up here and a uh, clamp, um, a compression clamp up here on my VFD. Uh, that's just simply to hold the hose. Um, the, the enclosure obviously stays together by itself, um, but I found that wrapping it up here against the uh, shelf bracket was just way too tight for this uh, tight corner over here. So I just wrap it, uh, drop the hose down a little bit and then wrap, uh, float it over so that it doesn't uh, fall off the front end. I just put that little clamp there just to hold the uh, hose up there. So um, let's see. I'm ready to keep going. I've already got my camera started. Um, it is going to do a bit check just to zero the the uh, the bit. Since the bit hasn't changed, nothing will really happen. Um, here in a minute when it's done, it will uh, scoot back over, spin up to speed, and start cutting. All right, here we are with the completed board. I'm about to pull it all up and I'm gonna switch over to uh, assembly. We're gonna assemble one of these guys um, so you guys know exactly how it's put together. Hey guys, I've got all of my parts already. This is what's gonna come in the enclosure kit. Let's take a really close look and we'll go over each of the parts before we actually start to assemble. Um, I've got a bunch of acrylic parts, a couple of HDPE panels and some printed parts. 
as well as a hardware screw bag, a couple of electrical components, and our new power cord. I hope that explanation made sense, how I used my machine to actually cut the HDPE with the enclosure and the uh, running pause button. Um, I've decided to split off the actual assembly of the uh, enclosure into a separate video. I'll link to it at the end. Hope you enjoyed the show this time. It's a little more, um, little more using the machine than it is just showing you how to assemble something or, or use one of my products. But um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, and yeah, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.